Despite only being featured in one episode, the Battle of Kamino was one of the most important battles in Star Wars The Clone Wars, and it could have gone terribly, terribly wrong for the Republic. Even as it is, the battle had a severe impact on the Grand Army, as entire columns of developing clones were destroyed in the fighting, and many developed clones were killed in action. But there were many ways in which the battle could have gone much, much worse, and in this video, we'll be looking at them. The Battle of Kamino, featured in Star Wars The Clone Wars, was actually the second of three. Chronologically, in Legends, the CIS had first attacked Kamino three months into the war, a battle that culminated in the release of the ARC Troopers, while Kamino would be attacked again over a year later in the second battle by the CIS allied Mandalorian protectors. The battle we're talking about in this video, however, which took place in 21 BBY, was the largest of the three, and the one in which the Republic was luckiest in its victory. In this Battle of Kamino, General Grievous attacked the world from orbit, sacrificing many warships in a naval battle that was actually a cover for a more sinister plot. The debris from the destroyed ships fell into Kamino's oceans, where Aquadroids secretly assembled assault craft that leapt from the waves to attack Topoka City, the heart of the Kaminoan cloning industry. The Republic was initially at a serious disadvantage while the battle droids invaded the city and were joined both by General Grievous and Asajj Ventress, but the heroics of Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and a small group of clones managed to stop their advance and force a separatist retreat from Kamino. The Republic won the battle, albeit at a high cost. It's a miracle that the Republic won at Kamino, especially considering what was at stake. Though by this point in the Clone Wars, the clone troopers growing in Palpatine's secret spy cloning facilities on Centax 2 were nearly ready, Kamino was nonetheless the single source of manpower for the Grand Army of the Republic. If the Confederacy had captured it, the creation of new clone troopers would have immediately been ground to a halt, meaning that in the months until the Spartai clones were ready, the Republic would have to make do with rapidly dwindling numbers of clones against armies of droids that grew by the day. Even if the Republic launched a mass conscription program, there would be no time to properly train an army of conscripts capable of operating on the necessary scale, and the Confederacy would have beaten the Republic to a pulp in the meantime. That's not all, however. If the CIS captured Kamino, it would have captured the DNA of Jango Fett with it, as well as detailed records of the entire cloning process and extensive information on GR strategies and protocol. This would enable the Confederacy to make a variety of clone-killing biological weapons and possibly even exploit design flaws in the standard clone model. On top of this, CIS High Command would have gained detailed and near-complete insight into how the Grand Army operated strategically, as they would have access to information on everything the clones were trained for, all of the standard and non-standard strategies they had been taught, and schematics for all their weapons and heavy equipment. The clone army wouldn't have just lost its source of reinforcements, the Confederacy would know absolutely everything about how it operated and what its weaknesses were. The Clone Wars would have become an absolute clone bloodbath. As it turns out, none of that happened, but it easily could have. Let's take a look into how. First off, the Republic's first bit of extreme luck came before the battle even began. Against all odds, they managed to capture a transmission between General Grievous and Asajj Ventress, which gave the Republic an advance warning, which ultimately led to the entire 501st Legion being sent to reinforce the Kaminoan garrison. We are decrypting the audio, sir. The clone planet of Kamino will be a dangerous target. Just make sure you hold up your half of the mission. We must stop the production of new clones if we are to win this war. Had the transmission not been captured, the 501st would never have been sent, and Kamino's defences would have been woefully unprepared for the Confederacy's assault. General Grievous would have been able to crush all resistance on the planet even without his trick with the assault droids, and the Republic would have lost badly. When the battle started properly, the Republic got its next lucky break, this time due to poor planning on the part of the CIS High Command. Grievous's fleet primarily consisted of light warships, which were supposed to be blasted apart so as to drop assault ships into the Kaminoan Ocean. This part of the plan worked, but it would have been so much more efficient if the CIS had also used some heavier hitting battleships as well, either as a rear guard or as a secondary fleet waiting in ambush for when the surprise attack is launched on the surface. Had the CIS done this, the Republic's fleet would have been annihilated when the Jedi refocused their attention to the surface battle, which would have doomed Kamino for certain. But for whatever reason, none of the Confederacy's greatest tacticians thought of this, and so Grievous's fleet was easily decimated when he left to command the surface assault. One of the most important pieces of luck here was the discovery of the assault ships hidden in the wreckage of Grievous's fleet. Had Obi-Wan Kenobi not noticed the unusual amount of debris raining down on Kamino, the Republic would have been caught completely unprepared by the surface assault. The clone defense force on Kamino was much more prepared when the assault ships jumped out of the sea as a result of Kenobi's attention to detail. Command ship, 
something's not right. Had the defenders failed to notice, the defenders would have been at a much more significant disadvantage, as garrisons in essential areas like hangar bays would have been caught unprepared and wiped out before the Kaminoans were able to properly respond. Obi-Wan saves the day yet again not long after when he begins a lightsaber duel to General Grievous. Grievous was leading a force of battle droids against the Topoka City armories at the time when Kenobi confronted him. Grievous ordered his droids to continue the attack while he pursued Kenobi elsewhere. In this manner, Kenobi drew Grievous away from the battle, luring him into a drawn out and time consuming lightsaber duel. While Grievous ultimately won the duel, by the time he did so, his invasion of the barracks had already failed. As we all know, the droid attack on the barracks was thwarted by the ingenuity of Rex, Cody, Fives, Echo, and especially 99, who were able to drive the battle droids sent after them into retreat, preventing the CIS from completing one of its two primary objectives, to completely destroy the young clones and the reinforcements that were waiting to be shipped to the front lines. If Kenobi hadn't drawn Grievous away, all of these clones would have been sliced into bite-sized pieces considering the effectiveness of lightsabers against blasters in close quarters combat. The barracks would have been sacked and the Republic would have lost many, many clones. A grievous cost indeed. And last, but not least, we have a number of lucky moves in Anakin's duel with Asajj Ventress. Ventress had been sent to complete the Confederacy's other objective, to capture Jango Fett's DNA. beginning to think my presence went unnoticed. You weren't planning on leaving without saying hello, were you? The first bit of luck comes in the form of timing. Had Skywalker not arrived when he did, Ventress probably would have been able to slip out of Topoka City without a fight, which would have been crippling for the Republic even if Grievous had failed to destroy the barracks. Timing plays another crucial role at the end of Skywalker's duel with Ventress. As I'm sure most of you remember, that duel ended with the fight for Fett's DNA, which Ventress would have taken were it not for the timely catch of an anonymous clone trooper. Had these clones not arrived at that moment, Ventress may well have gotten away with the DNA, and we all know how that would have played out. They all rest rather heavily on luck. With the exception of the Confederacy's tactical blunder and Kenobi's skillful moves, the factors we've examined here pretty much all hinge on chance occurrences and sheer coincidence. It can be concluded then that the Republic won the Battle of Kamino purely through the will of the Force. Or did it? There were some pretty amazing coincidences and shows of skill or incompetence here, but none of them would have happened were it not for one highly unlikely coincidence, the fact that the Republic managed to intercept a private communication between two of the highest ranking officers in the entire confederacy, just as they happened to be discussing an exceptionally important matter. The odds of the Republic happening to stumble upon this are very slim, and on top of that, the CIS High Command would have surely had better encryption, or else they wouldn't have been able to have any of their major victories in the Clone Wars. The unlikeliness of this situation points to outside intervention, specifically outside intervention on the part of Darth Sidious. Sidious probably wanted the Confederacy's assault on Kamino to fail, and so it makes sense that he would have ensured that the Republic just so happened to be able to pick up the right conversation. As a result of this, Skywalker, Kenobi, and the 501st Legion were sent to Kamino, where they were almost entirely responsible for winning the battle. Why Sidious would have wanted the CIS to attack Kamino and fail is unclear, but it's not unprecedented. Indeed, the first battle of Kamino was completely set up by Darth Sidious for his own ends. In that case, Sidious also allowed the Republic to get an advance warning about the impending attack on Kamino, and he also fed the Confederacy's commander Mire false information that got him killed. In this case, Sidious intended to kill Mire, so as to limit the Confederacy's advantage and prolong the Clone Wars. If Sidious manipulated an assault on Kamino once, it's not unlikely that he could have done it again. So that's how the Republic was exceptionally lucky in winning the Second Battle of Kamino. And what do you think? Do you agree with our conspiracy theory here, or are we grasping at straws? Feel free to post your thoughts in the comments section below. 
And just before I go guys, I would really appreciate it if you checked out the Patreon we currently have set up. It's got a lot of cheap tiers that just help in supporting me and do come with a couple of perks as well, including a secret behind the scenes discord where you can see where all the magic happens. So honestly guys, any amount helps. And also, if you're looking to game with the wider Star Wars community, we have our Geatsleys Gaming Network that currently hosts a Clone Wars RP, an Imperial RP, a Halo RP, with custom maps coming soon to make the experience even more authentic. And we also have our Geatsleys Gaming Network Roblox, where it's a fun casual setting where you can just roam around in our Coruscant map and choose from a variety of clone morphs and just play around. It's honestly pretty fun and we do have a couple of cool maps coming out very shortly as well. So make sure you check all that out. All the links are formatted down in the description below, including our Discord links. Anyways guys, as always, Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.